welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on the day before the Times Crossword Championship. Um, and today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle that one of our testers has actually recommended. Well, I say recommended, I mean requested. Um, so they had a look at this and couldn't make much progress with it. It's called Clapstool by Ictus. Uh, I didn't know what Clapstool meant. Um, Ictus, I know, has done a series of puzzles named after cities. So to my shame, I thought it might be a city, <laughs> but it's it's not a Clapstool. I think is a folding chair. Um, and I don't know why it's called folding chair, but it's a, an arresting grid. And any, anyway, um, uh, one of our testers um, who do the most incredible job uh, in terms of filtering through all of these puzzles that we get sent and recommending which ones should appear on the channel has, has, has asked me to have a look at this. So I'm going to have a quick go at it. It's meant to be hard, I think. I looked on Logic Masters Germany and these are some of the comments. I mean, all of the comments are eulogistic, absolutely wonderful, like Pietato, amazingly elegant, fantastic breaking in a superb puzzle. Henry Pye James, Looked, looks completely baffling at first, but only three and a half difficulty for me in the end. I mean, just everybody's saying stunning. <laughs> Shwoople, that's, that's brilliant. Utter madness. Maybe that's what I'll call the video if I manage to solve it. Playmaker. One of the most beautiful openings for a sandwich puzzle I've ever seen. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So it's it's been, it's got a lot of praise. Um, and if you're wondering what the rules are. They're very simple, actually. Um, these circles, oh, I can't click on the circles. These circles outside the grid are sandwich Sudoku clues, and these arrows are normal. So what you're actually being told is that that cell, say that was a five, that that's what the sandwich total would be in this column, because that would be a five as well. So it's very, it's a very strange setup, um, but this is what we're going to have a go at in a moment or two's time. Now, let me read you some notices before we do that. It's the final day. It's the 20th of October today. And that means it's a final day if you want to enter our competition, which was to solve the trick or treat Sudoku hunt over there on Patreon. Um, hundreds and hundreds of, of, of you. I think we're getting on for a thousand correct entries. So fabulous work from all those of you who've managed to work your way through it. It's a whole series of six by six puzzles. So. Mm, yeah, you could do it. You could do it. If you're if you're a patron and, and you start when you get this message on the video, you could complete it before midnight, definitely. Um, so uh, if you want to be in with a chance of winning the competition, do send your entry in toot sweet. Um, and then we had a crossword video this morning. I recorded my solve of today's Times crossword, which was a very fun puzzle indeed. Really beautiful grid, lots of nice clues. So I definitely commend that to you if you've got any interest in cryptic crosswords. It was my uh, my preparation for tomorrow's uh, big day. First time in four years we've got a Times crossword championship. So I'll be up there. Mark will be up there. And uh, yeah, it'll be a, it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully I will see some some people up there either I've not seen for a while or perhaps who who know us through the channel. That would be great. Um, now, birthdays. I have three birthdays today. I'm going to start with KJ. It's your birthday. And I know this because your mum, Michelle, wrote to us. She wrote a lovely email actually about you. She said that you've become so obsessed with Sudokus that you've solved 250 puzzles since July. That is a lot. Um, and she described you as one of her biggest blessings and hopes that all your hopes and dreams come true. So KJ, happy, happy birthday, my friend. I hope that you are able to have chocolate cake and it is a good day for you. And next, Lynn. Lynn, you've turned 26 today. And I know this because your fiance, Martin, wrote to us. And I think, Lynn, you've just started a new job as a teacher. So good luck with that. A very, very worthwhile uh, profession for my mind. Um, and Martin says he's very proud of your achievements and who you are as a person, which is a nice message. And you are getting chocolate cake. Martin is sorting it out, Lynn. So happy days. Um, and then finally to Sophie. Sophie, it's you've turned 30 today. And I know this because your brothers, Chris and Ruben, wanted to wish you a happy return, many happy returns over there in the Netherlands. The three of you share the love now of Sudoku. I think, Sophie, you've come to Sudoku more recently. Uh, Sudoku and road cycling, um, which, uh, yeah, that's, well, that, that's, that's good. That's exercising your body and your mind. Those two hobbies 
Nah, don't need any other hobbies after that. And Sophie, happy birthday for today. I hope you have a great day. Now, let us turn our attention to actual solving by me. <laughs> Let's have a look at Clapstool. Let's have a look at Ictus's puzzle. Um, these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we need to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and in every three by three box. Get a di given digit today as well. Um, clues outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits sandwiched between the one and nine in that row or column. So let's just stop there and check we understand that. Ignore the arrow, oh, I can't click on them. Uh, ignore the arrow for a moment. And let's say there was a nine here and a one here. Then what this clue would be, this clue outside the grid would be the sum of those four digits, the sum of the digits sandwiched between the one and the nine in this row. So hopefully that's clear. So if these were, let's put some digits in, three, four, five, and six, that's 18. So we'd have to write 18 into this clue. Now, there's a rinky dink in this puzzle though. I've already alluded to it. It says digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle, i.e. in this puzzle, all arrow tips must contain the same digit as in their circle. So you couldn't have an 18 total here because if this was 18, that would be 18 and you can't put 18 into a Sudoku puzzle, at least not in, the, in this Sudoku puzzle. Um, and that's all the rules. So literally this, these, this congregation of tiny arrows mirroring their sandwich clues, which are not given, is enough to solve the puzzle. Um, I'm not surprised this has got four stars out of five for difficulty. Some people might find it three and a half stars. It seems difficult. Our tester found it difficult. I'm already, it's already scrambling my brain, but do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, Right, so as as we were doing the example, the first thing we can state is that every single sandwich clue, so every single circle in this puzzle, is a single digit number. Right, which means the sandwich lengths cannot be dramatically large, so we, we can't have a four cell sandwich length at all. And that's because if we put one here and then nine here, and what's the minimum you can make those digits add up to? Two, three, four, five is 14. And 14 is not a single digit number. There is a knowledge bomb for you. So it's quite difficult actually to have a three cell sandwich. It is, it is possible, but only just. If you have a three cell sandwich, the minimum you could have would be two, three, four, which would equal nine, which is also the maximum total that we could put into any of these cells. So you can have a three cell sandwich, but only just. Two cell sandwiches are going to be very easy though, aren't they? Um, uh, one cell sandwiches might be harder though. One, a uh, one, no, oh, you can't, ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, you can't have a one cell sandwich in row five <laughs> for a very, ob oh, no, no, you can't. You really can't because um, if you do, if this was a one and this was a nine, that digit ought to be the same as that digit. That must be right, mustn't it? So if this was a three, I'd then have to put three in there. But what if that was, say, a five? Yeah, it doesn't, well, it just doesn't matter. You just can't do it, can you? Because this, the single, if there is a, you can make, you can make this number. A, yeah, obviously it could be a digit that is a single digit total. That's just self-evidently obvious because it's a single digit. But it mustn't be a sing it mustn't be expressed as a single digit in this row. So if it was five, you'd have to put you'd have in fact if it was five, you'd have to have two and three in the middle of a one nine sandwich. Yeah, all right. So okay. So this digit is not two, three, or four. Because they they don't have a different way of expressing them. Uh, what I mean by that is if that's a four. Um, how can we make, 
how can we put f a f a digits totaling four between a one and a nine in this row? You can't do it because the only way of expressing four, given the one is not available, because the one is used in the sandwich crusts, the only way of expressing four is using itself. And it's and itself is here, it's not in the middle of the sandwich. So if this was one and this was nine, I can't then put four here, can I? And I can, what I also can't do is, the normal way of getting to four in Sudoku is with a one, three pair, you'd have two ones in the row. Right, so this digit, and I think only this digit, because this only applies. It only applies where there's no offset. Yeah, it only applies where there's no offset between the arrow and the sandwich total. So if you look at every other arrow, apart from that one, every other arrow relates to a different row to the sandwich clue it relates to. But in this row and in this row, the, the sandwich clue is the same as, it's, the sandwich clue is in the same row as the digit being pointed to by the arrow. So this cell cannot be, well it, uh, no, it can't be one. It definitely can't be one either, can it? Because then we'd have a sandwich, we'd have to put one in the sandwich. So it's not one, two, three, or four. I'm not sure whether it could be nine. Let me just think about nine, because nine would make it a sandwich crust. Let's think about that. So if that's a nine, then what are we saying? Then we're saying we need to put a sa make a sandwich of size which has got size nine, but that could be a three cell sandwich. Oh yeah, okay. And the other, sorry, the other thing that's totally obvious, which I hadn't really majored on at all here, is that whatever this digit is, it is the sandwich total for this row, this row, and this row because of the way these arrows point. Uh, right. So this row, th these three rows have the same sandwich total. So if this was a very small now, if that was five, which is now the minimum it can be, In this row, that has to be expressed as a two-digit sandwich. What I what I'm um, oh, I've been completely inarticulate. I realise sometimes I just stop talking, and I suddenly think you're on camera. You have to say something. Um, I haven't got much to say. All, all I'm all I'm thinking is the following. If we look at this box, I can only put one one and one nine in this box. So that means that at least one of these rows has no one or nine in it. And that means that at least one of these rows, we have to, th yeah, okay, I haven't, I haven't got anything as a result of it. I just want to think about this a bit harder. So what I'm saying is I've got to dispose some ones and nines in box five. Don't know where they go. I have absolutely no idea. But even if I put the ones and nines in different rows like this, I still end up with one row at least one row, because I could put these in the same row, but at least one row that is devoid of ones and nines in the central, in these. So it, let's imagine, let's imagine we do put the ones and nines here. That, I just, it's, the, it's row four I want to think about. So row four, we're now saying, none of these are ones and nines, and yet we've got to put ones and nines in this row. Now there's only now two ways that we can organize our ones and nines in this row. Either, because, because we can't put the one and the nine together, because that would mean this was a zero. 
you can't put zero in Sudoku. Either you'd have something like this, uh, a one and a nine spaced out by, and this would be the same digit as this. That's possible and probably what we're going to end up with. Or, or you get the much more interesting situation, which is that the one and the nine have to span the central box. And if the one and the nine span the central box, then this would have to be a two, three, four, wouldn't it? There's no other possibility. Hmm. So what does that <laughs> what does that mean? Um, so that would be a two three four. Nine would be over here. Oh, but this would be a nine then. So this this particular arrangement couldn't work. Let's just shuffle this around so we can make it work. We can put a one here maybe. Uh, Oh, I don't know, nine here. So there would be a one here. And a nine there, perhaps. Um, no, hang on, we're saying that is a nine, aren't we? So, Oh, hang on, I'm getting confused. No, so that would have to be a one, because this couldn't be a two, three, or a four. Sorry, I, mean, I realise I'm not really making any progress here. I'm just trying to understand how these clues fit together. Um... So that can, well, that can work, is what we've just discovered. That very much can work. So, hmm, oh dear. <laughs> okay, so what, what, was the, what was the alternative to that? The alternative was that, um, was that we didn't have anything spanning the central box which would require ah uh, no hang on hang on hang on hang on i had the whisper the whisper of an idea there we don't have okay so either we have, so in this central box, oh, there must be at least one row that has no ones and nines in it. And we've established that it is possible for that row to have a one and a nine on either side of it. What if, what if that's not the case then? So we have a one and a nine somewhere in this box. There is an empty row. And then we've got to package the ones and nines into another box somewhere. And we know that wherever they go in, in that row that has the empty one or nine in, this, in, in, in row four, row five and row six, we know that the one and the nine will be exactly one cell away from each other. Now, that row cannot be row five, can it? So what I'm thinking is, if we do this, this, and then we say, okay, we're going to try and have a situation where we're not going to put the one and the nine either side of the central, either, either side of the central box in the row here that doesn't have one or nine in it. We're actually going to package the ones and nines, for example, into those two squares. That can't work. Because this digit needs to be the same as this digit. And it would be the same if we tried to do it here. This digit would have to be the same as this digit. So that doesn't work. So actually what we're saying is that either... Yeah, so, so this is the whisper of the idea that I think is now becoming more solid in my brain. So whatever this digit is, because there is a one cell sandwich which can't be in this row. It's either there, there, 
there or there well it can't be in box four you can't you can't make these digits the same or these digits the same so there is a one cell sandwich in box six or we've got the other situation where there is a span of the central row and i bet you we end up with the span of the central row because that's going to give us this digit so that's what i expect to be correct but why is this wrong then? Why can you not have 1 and 9 here with this digit and this digit being the same number? I shouldn't make that red, should I? Let's make that purple. And so I'm saying that for some reason, I think this will be disprovable. I mean, goodness only knows how you do that. Oh, although, sorry, I know, stop talking again. I have, I have, well, again, I'm, I'm just on a, on a, on an idea thread that. No, all, all I'm noticing is that in column eight, none of these squares can be ones or nines now because of this one nine pair, and this one nine pair is either there or there isn't it i mean it could be nine one but the same the same the point is that none of these squares all of these squares have to not be one or nine so in this column how's that going to work um The answer is I don't know yet, but I feel that that's... Is this subject, is this square, this square is the same, isn't it? That's five, six, seven, eight, or nine, again, because this arrow is pointing directly down the grid. Now, oh, I think oh, this is close to being interesting. I just can't quite... In my mind, I have a feeling that I haven't, I can't articulate that there is a problem with this. But what is that problem? Am I going, am I really correct about that? Well, Yeah, there is a there is something going on, isn't there? There's definitely something going on. By by which I mean Oh I've got it. I can disprove this. Good grief. I mean this is so complicated. I had to go to sort of a, a quite a bit of a rigmarole in my brain for my brain to actually do it, but my brain's done it. Well done, brain. Right, this doesn't work. I mean, this is a beautiful, this is absolutely crazy. This is so crazy. Um, but, but this doesn't work. Okay, because in this situation, the point is now to consider this column. Where are we putting the ones and nines in this column? Now, again, what we cannot do in this column, and it applied for this row as well, is we cannot have a one cell sandwich because then that digit is the same as the sandwich content. Same if we put it here, this digit will be the same as this. So there is no one cell sandwich content here, which means that the one and the nine do in this instance have to span the central box. And we might say, well, that's fine, except it's not quite, because we the only way we can make this a one and a nine and this a single digit sandwich is if we make this two, three, four. And if we make this two, three, four, that digit, which is the same as that digit, cannot be, because we worked out way back in the beginning that this couldn't be so low as to be two, three, or four. It has to be at least five. So you can't make a nine sandwich, and therefore that would be a double digit number, and the world is broken. Whoa. So this is huge, because now we have proved, hang on, I'm going to get rid of some things. Now we have proved that that there is a span 
of the central box. So it, now in the rows, what we've proved is that there is a span, a full span of the central box in one row or another. Now, that means that the sandwich total, wherever that, wherever the one and the nine are, that span the central box, we know it's a two, three, four sandwich. So we know that this square is a nine. I've got a digit. Now, now what I really want to be able to do now is to write nine into all these three circles because that would be well, well. I was going to say that would be useful it would be useful but I've now noticed something else which is that in row five you can't write the nine and the one are not spanning the central row because there's a nine here now so in fact it's either here or here right so you must have a one in one of these squares and a nine in one of these squares that's forced because these can't be nines and there must be a spanage of the central box in one of these squares in either there or there so one of this is either that's two three four or that's two three four and this nine is a nine sandwich so the so we've got to put a one but if we put the one there that's not going to work is it because because there's a two three four in one of these one of these rows so the minimum size of that digit is five and the minimum size of those two digits is two and three because they can't use one and five plus two and three is ten it's not nine so that is not, that's not one. Ah, that's not one. This is one. This, this pair of digits adds up to nine. Oh, this might be wrong. That two, three, four. We don't know whether the two, three, four is here or here. It's in one of them for sure. This adds up to nine. Um... I don't know. This is going to do something down here, I think, but I don't really understand how I'm meant to work that out because I don't know how we're going to how we're going to disambiguate which way round this goes. Let me just think about this. If that if that's one and that's nine, what are we then saying? We're saying that nine. 9 is then in one of these squares, 1 is in one of these squares, but this sandwich clue is a 9, <laughs> it's so complicated. Um, I don't know. Sorry, I'm uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know. I'm just stop talking. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just zoning out. Sometimes I wonder when I'm recording these videos. Has there been a moment in the video where I've just done what I just did then, which is sort of corpse for like 15 minutes, and where my brain's just been ticking over? I'm sure there have been moments of pauses that have been a lot longer than I ever intended. Um, oh dear. I mean, I feel that that was the break-in, getting the nine, that this was nine and these were all nine. So it's meant to be smooth, according to those comments from now. Um, I don't know why it's meant to be smooth. Maybe we've got to be, I've got to be a bit more diligent about how, how the spanner works, in the sense that if this is one and this is nine, that we know that this will be two, three, four. What else do we know as a result of that? So let's just let's just hypothesize this is true and think a bit harder about what it might mean. So because because we can always just shift this down here if we notice a problem. But I just want I just want to think with a bit with it looking a bit more concrete in my brain about what it does on in this column especially. I think um so nine is now in one of those squares. One is in one of these squares. Ah, uh, yeah, see, it is useful to do this. It is useful because that can't be a nine, in fact, in this, in this paradigm. 
because if this was a 9, those two squares would be part of the sandwich, and we can see that they would add up to at least 5 and 6, which is 11. And this digit, well, no, not that digit, but that digit is a 9. We're trying to make a 9 sandwich. And the same is true for that being a 1. That can't work, can it? Because those two would be in the sandwich. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on, I've made it. I think I've made a mistake here. Because now, if that's all true, what I just said, I'm proving that this square has to be a one. <laughs> because I've noticed this can't be a one either. Because oh, this oh, I really wish. I actually really do wish I could write nine into all of these. So let, let's just test step through this logic. Let's try and step through the logic without reference to column eight, actually, or column seven or column nine. What I'm saying is that whether this was here or here, we'd get this sort of pencil mark in the other row. These two squares are a minimum of five and six if they're not nine. So there's no way that can be a nine. That must be true. And similarly, there's no, oh no, it's not the same. Sorry, it's not the same here because these two squares don't see the two, three, four. Right, okay. Uh, all right, but that can't be a one. That must be true. That can't be a one because then this would be the nine and that digit oh hang on yeah well that digit would be a nine because we know that the sandwich clue is a nine it's not no it's not that it goes there i just keep wanting to put it there but that would be a nine one pair with a nine between it so that doesn't work so this isn't a one so the one is here here or here the nine is here or here and that we have to be prepared to invert this so it could look like that instead we don't know yet we're just trying to understand what the what the ramifications are now now well well here's a point that pencil mark well that's interesting okay nine is not included there and that's actually correct i think because whichever one of these is one let's make that one for a moment now in this column oh hang on i can see where this is going this is huge this is absolutely huge right right it doesn't matter where we put this one here or here the point is that there is an open open flank down down one of these columns here or here now can this be spanned by a one or a nine no because that square can't be two three or four so that's at least five and the same would be true if this was the two three four and we tried to span the central column we'd, we'd, we'd find one of the digits has to be five so we cannot make a spanner now if you can't make a spanner if you can't do that three cell sandwich total in this column you can't have nine as a sandwich total, but but surely it's it's more powerful than that, isn't it? Because doesn't that mean doesn't that mean there has to be a one cell? If you can't span, yeah, in the column, yeah. So I think the ah right, this is very hard to explain, but I think what because because the column that's open. Let, let, let's use this as the example. This is wrong. I'm telling you this is wrong, but I think the point is still going to be made. In this column, clearly these squares couldn't be a 1 or a 9. And that means in this column, the 1 and the 9 have to be very close together. They've got to be separated by one cell. Well, that's telling us, actually, that this is not the column that has the open flank. Because if we have the 1 and the 9 one cell apart, that digit has to appear in the middle of the sandwich. So in fact, what we're now saying, well, this is weird now. So what we're now saying is that this is not a one, but but this could be wrong because we we, we don't know whether, whether the one and the nine is here and here or here and here with a two, three, four. But we do know that, that in this version, this is the one, but we have to be prepared that that could be the way around it has to go. We don't know that yet. Um, but we now know well this is weird 
this is weird we do know one more thing because whatever this digit is i'm going to give it a color actually whatever that digit is in this column these three squares cannot add up to nine we can't have the one and the nine here because this square would be too high so in this column there does have to be a one cell sandwich and that can't be there because that would be orange so it must be here these two squares have to be a one nine pair they have to be um, and then that digit is orange and it's the same as this one which is five six seven or eight um, and that's that applies whichever way round this goes yes <laughs> and now now we're in a position to do it okay so let me pause here because i can see now which way round these ones and nines go and i think i've got lucky in my disposition because i think this is actually going to be correct so let let's let's take a step back we know that the one and the nine are either here or here so and let's 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 have a quick look at the other way round which would be here here one here and this being a two three four pair so imagine we're in this world now where is the one or the nine in column eight in this world and the answer is nowhere useful because this cannot be a nine we know that from this this the work we've done down here and so the nine has to be up here it's got to be in one of those two squares well it obviously can't be next to the one because this isn't a zero and it can't be there because this and this would be the same digit again this is remarkable it's absolutely remarkable so actually we have to reinstate where we were which is here because this is correct actually we now know that this is the open flank in row four or it, 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 it's this one rather than this one that has the two three four in it we know that there is a nine yeah okay so we know we know there is a nine in one of these two squares by sudoku and we know that the nine is not here because if this was the nine we'd have a three cell sandwich which would have a five in it and that cannot add up to a single digit total so that is the nine there is a one <laughs> this is this is so beautiful it's, it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous because now there's a one up here which can't go there otherwise this circle would have a zero in it which it doesn't it has that digit in it so it's not there it's not here because then that those two digits would be the same so it's there so now this cell adds up to the same as these two and the same as these two right so that means this total here is different these are different digits to this total here because um let's imagine this was a five say if this is a five and this was two three and this was two three where would you put those digits down here they'd have to be down here and they can't be because two of these digits are one and nine and the only only the orange one and orange is the other so these have to be these have to be well this takes five out of it i take six out of there oh, oh come on yeah okay so now i'm starting to understand it because this can't be five because five only has because one isn't available as a way of making five in a domino in in sandwich sudoku because you'd have to repeat the. you can't use one four here you'd repeat the one so five has one way of making it up which is a two three pair which doesn't work six has one way of making it up which is two four and that doesn't work so this can't be five or six it's now seven or eight and so that's seven or eight pregnant pause while i think about it so this square is the high digit in the seven or eight because this square is at least five or six it can't actually be seven because that would require a one beneath beneath it to add up to this number so this is five or six that's two or three um i think i might read all of the all of the digits that are one and nine now actually if that's all right Go 
Can we do more than that with our newfound knowledge of the world? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what on earth am I meant to do now? Oh, bobbins. Uh, please don't get really badly stuck, Simon. Please, Simon, don't get badly stuck. What on earth am I meant to do now? One of these squares is orange. Can we put... Ah, all right. Okay. So oh, I see. I see how to do this right now. Or do I? Hang on. Hang on. I'm not sure. I'm not so sure I do actually. Yeah. Okay. This being the one in this row placed the nine, didn't it? Can't have the nine here because although I can't write it in, this is a nine sandwich clue. So if I make that nine, that's also nine. So this is nine. Now, how big can that be? Can that really be? No, that can't be seven or eight. Because if that's seven or eight and orange, this square has to be one or two and it can, can't be anything. In fact, that digit is quite a high digit. It's at least five. So that's not orange, which means this is orange, which means this is seven or eight, which means, well, can that really be? Oh no. Can it? Can it really be? Maybe it can be. Okay, um, oh well, I, I can see oranges in one of those two squares by Sudoku, which means it's up there by Sudoku. But I, I think, it, I was hoping I could rule it out of this square, but I don't know that I can. If this is that digit, it ha does have to be seven then. Oh, yeah, okay, so that doesn't work for, for a complicated reason. If if this digit is orange, remember this is adding up to 9. So it couldn't be 8 anymore, because this would have to be a 1. So we'd have to do this. We'd have to go 7, 7, 2. But now this square's 3, and that total is now 8. But we've just said it has to be 7, because that's a 7. And that 7 and 8 are not the same number. Isn't that weird? So actually, we can rule this out from being orange. That's orange, and therefore it's seven or eight. And one of these is seven or eight. And if it was this one, then that is saying that this row's sandwich total is seven or eight, which would mean that We know that must be lower than orange, so this would have to be... I don't think this could be a 1 or a 9. In fact, look, this is this is something I should do, isn't it? Where's the 1 in this row? It can't be miles away from the 9, because this is... No, it's not that, it's this. Oh, gosh, this is complicated. Well, it's still true to say it's a single digit total. So this sandwich clue here is a single digit total. So this cannot be more than a three cell sandwich and it can't actually be a three cell sandwich because that square can't be a nine so this is a maximum of a two cell sandwich which means that the one is here oh it's in one of two places only which means the one over here is in one of two places only by sudoku um Can we do any more things like that? <laughs> that felt that felt like it was quite a good idea to do that. Um, that's got to that that earns a red red moniker now, doesn't it? Um, don't know, don't know. All right, let's carry on with this this then because this is a high digit. We worked that out before because it can't be 2, 3, or 4. So we know this domino is adding up to 9, and that's got to be 5, 6, or 7. It can't be 8, can it? Because that would be a 1. And if it's 7, that would be a 2. Which would make this a 3. Which would make this an 8. 
I don't know. That might be possible. I'm not sure. Um, I know this and this are different. Um, ah, sorry, I've got stuck. Badly, badly stuck. What about... I don't know. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me, come on, Simon. What on earth is going on here? We could... Can we do... Oh, so I don't know where to look. I've got no idea. I've got no... I, I want to write nine into all of these for some reason. I, f I just feel that that would that would help me to frame frame my thoughts a bit more clearly, and I, that would allow me to write sevens and eights into all of these. So yeah, so this is we know this is adding up to seven or eight, and it's different from this. Right got you your naughty little puzzle right this well well i, I um, have i done yeah okay this the, the way yes this is eight right if this is seven yeah this doesn't work if this is seven there's only one way you can make it work which have to be two and five. You'd have to take the two lowest digits. But we know that yellow is different from green, don't we? Because otherwise we've got a problem down here. So if this is two five, what's this? And I think that has to then be three four, because it can't be two five and it can't be one six. But if that's three four and that's two five, what's that digit? Nothing. That's got no options at all. That's quite cool. So this square, so this is not 2, 5, which doesn't mean we know which version of 8 it is. It could still be 2, 6 or 3, 5, but we do know it adds up to 8. And that means all of those squares are 8s. And that means one of these squares is an 8. And that means... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Come on, Simon. That must be. That's got to be quite profound. It means you can't put four in there because it would require double four. Oh dear, dear, dear. That this is so. This is still so complicated. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm going to have to resort to Sudoku. Ichus, it's an absolute outrage you've made me do this. Right, okay. Where are 2, 3 and 4 in row 5? Now the answer is I don't really know. But I do know that they're not here. And I do know that you can't put two of them there. Because they will not add up to 9. Therefore, one of them is here. And therefore, that is a 2, 3, 4 quadruple, which means these squares are from 5, 6, and 7. And that might matter for reasons that I can't spot. Or it might not. I don't know. Um, oh no. <laughs> Oh no, come on, Simon. Can we do anything with that? I don't know. So what do I know about these digits? So these are these are not one seven, are they? So they're two, three, five, and six in some order. So hmm. So these squares go down here, and then two of them go up there. So one of these is a two or a three. Hmm. 
Wow, I don't know. This is this is seriously complicated still. Um, I know one of these digits goes in here along with a high digit, which is five, six or seven. Why is this given four being given to us? Is that is that doing something that I don't or I should be able to understand? Maybe I've got maybe I've got to be a bit more diligent about pencil marking everything here. Oh yeah, okay. Um in this row this sandwich clue is a single digit total, which actually is a maximum of, oh, it's actually a maximum of seven now. It doesn't really matter. The point is it couldn't be nine, could it? Oh, this is huge. Yeah, this is huge. Right, so where is in this row the, the other digit that's one or nine? That's not that. It's got to be there. Because it can't, it can't be further away than that, because that would require a three cell sandwich and require this to be a nine, which it cannot be. And it can't be nearer because neither of these can be one or nine. So that's a one or a nine. Um, now, doesn't that mean that can't be a one or a nine? No, <laughs> that's rotten. That is a rotten deduction. OK, um, that can be a one or a nine, I think. Uh, because what I was doing was I was looking at this column and saying, well, that can't be a three cell sandwich that, that adds up to a single digit total. But the point is, it doesn't need to be. There's no circle here. So that doesn't help us, unfortunately. Um, bar humbug. Yeah, but it could be something like that that I'm missing, couldn't it? It very much could be. Um what are these digits? These are these are from five, six, and seven. So that digit, if that digit was if that was a one, what are we then saying? We're then saying if that's a one, this sandwich clue is at least seven. So that digit uh, Whoa, 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 this is getting very complicated actually. I don't think that works. Again, it's very complicated to see why. How can this be? Didn't someone say this was smooth once you've got the break-in done? It's it's brilliant. Don't get me wrong. This is utterly brilliant but i don't think it's easy I'm, I'm probably means i'm missing some trick or other but if this is one this sandwich clue is at least a seven so this digit i think is at least a seven now it seems to me to have to be a seven or a nine then so let's let's go through this if that's one this is seven or nine now it can't be seven because if it's seven that instantly puts seven in this box here which means this is adding up to nine. So we've, we've self-defeated ourselves. So this has to actually be nine, but it can't be nine because of this row, I think, because now one and nine are locked in these squares together. But this sandwich total has to appear in that cell. And if you've got ones and nines locked into those squares, you can have a maximum of a one cell sandwich, which was going to be that digit, isn't it? So this doesn't work. So that's, that is a complicated way of saying that this is not one. This is one. And that is an interesting thing because now that is known. That's nine, that's nine, that's one. There always needs to be a way of disambiguating the ones and nines in these puzzles. Um, and we have just found found the way that we did it. We could do that. So that is quite a, ah. Ah, this is huge. This is huge. Right. So now that digit is not an eight. But wouldn't it have to be if, the, if that's orange, which is eight, that would be eight. And that that can't work now. So that cannot be. That's that's not eight. This is eight. 
and that means and uh, so this digit is the same as this digit this is weird which is a five or a six now I think so that's a five or a six which means this is a two or a three that's a five six pair in this row so that's a seven Now, what does that mean? Uh, maybe I should somehow notate that they are the same number. I'll give them both A just so that I remember that. I suppose I could label this one yellow as well. So I try and remember that that's what's going on. I got a seven here for nothing. So that's a seven. That's useful. Um, four in this column has to be Oh, that's, this is great. Okay, so where's four in this column? It's got to be here. That's not four anymore. That's a two, three pair, so that's a four. Four has got to be in one of two places, remembering to use the given digit for once. Um, that means... <laughs> don't know. <laughs> no idea. Um... Oh, dear, dear, dear. come on, Simon. So hang on. These digits are these digits, aren't they? They're not those. They're clearly not those digits by colouring. So those digits are those digits, and they appear down there, along with four. So these digits are from two, three, five, and six. Sorry, not two. Th well, two, three, four, five, and six. They definitely include the four. So this this is indisputably yellow. That, that little cell there. Um, and the, I suppose these have the same property. They've got to include green in them. So green is over here. Along with something else. Seven. Seven is down here somewhere. Ah, that probably can't be seven though. Because if that's seven, that's adding up to at least nine. And that digit would have to go there, which can't be a nine. So that's not seven. So this digit is smaller. Does that mean it's, I think that means it's green. That's a green digit, which is two, three, five, or six. Um, now, what does all that mean? No idea. What could we do now? We could, ah, oh, I see. I see what you've done here, Ictus, you clever little person. Now, look at row five. This domino has to add up to nine, doesn't it? And it can't use one, two, or three. So it's four, five, and that's what that given digit's doing. That's four, that's five, that's six, that's six by thingy. This is adding up to eight. That's three, that's five. This is two, this is six. Oh, come on, come on. This is absolutely brilliant. Three, four, five there. So this is two, six, four now. We might as well just sort of fill that in quite liberally. This we know is three or five. Uh, we know seven is at the bottom. These squares are known. So this is going to be good, isn't it? That's two, three, and seven. I say that with... Well, that's... No, this is huge. This is huge. This is two, three, and seven. That can't be two or three. This is seven. Um, because cause if this was two or three, I've got a two cell sandwich, which must, well, looking at this, it adds up to at least five, but we now know it adds up to seven because it can't add up to two or three. That square there is a five by Sudoku. And this can't be six because six plus three is nine. It's not seven. Right, so that's annoying. It's either five, two or three, four here. Yeah, I'd love to write seven in there. Uh, this is six. We've used that one. We haven't done this yet. Nine in the in nine in um, the top row is in one one of two places. Nine in nine in box thingy thingy is here. Nine in. Oh well, that looks tricky. You can't put nine here, can you? you? Can't. No, you can't put nine there because that's going to be the one in this box. And this clue would need a zero here. So that's not nine. This is nine. This is nine. Those two both turn red. That loses its 
religion. Now, now this can't be one, because if this was one, this sandwich clue would be cluing that digit into both of those squares. This is just remarkable. I don't know. Yet again, I'm completely floored that anyone can come up with this. How can you sit in a, you know, how can you sit down and come up with these sorts of ideas? It's just crazy. Now, what does all this mean? I don't know. But I do sort of feel like we've just made a bit of progress. Four is in one of those squares I've just seen. Um, which might be important. <laughs> uh, this clue here. This clue, which goes there. That can't be a four. No, that, no, that, sorry, this is totally obvious. This can't be four. Because that would be four, and those two digits would add up to four, which would require them to be a one three pair. Sorry, that's completely obvious. Um, still an outside chance for a 50 50 of a three in the corner. Um, so, what is this digit? This digit has to be the sum of those two squares, which does not involve a two, and it doesn't involve a four, actually, so it must involve a three, because otherwise this is adding up to more than a double digit number or it's adding up to a double digit number. So it's, it's got three in it, which is quite interesting. That's not three. Uh, it's not got three, so it's either three, five. Oh, it's not, well, it's not three, six, because three, six would require a nine here. So it is three, five, that's it. Right, so that's five, that's three. That's three, that's two. That's four. Um, this is eight, isn't it? So that is an eight. And presumably that's a six by Sudoku using this six. This, these squares are two and seven, I think. So I've not put three, four, five into row three. So let's do that. There must be a four in this domino. This, I think we're going to look at this column very soon, but let me just try and see if I can do some more Sudoku first. One and, one and six, I can put them in. One and six go in. I have a feeling if I've been more diligent, yeah, look, there's all of these um, ones, they've probably been available for ages. So that digit and that digit are the same now. Let's give those a color. We'll make those purple, not use purple yet. So by Sudoku, purple's in one of those squares. Can it be eight? No, <laughs> it can't be eight. Because if it was eight, that would be an eight and that would clash. So that's purple, two, three or four. And, oh, it's not four. Right, so these squares are now two or three only, not four. Um, might not do anything actually. Bother. <laughs> uh, no, okay, I've got nothing. Right, let's try this column. Seven and eight to place. Apparently not resolved. Very naughty, very naughty puzzle. Two, three and five to place. Right, there we go. That's a two, three, five triple, isn't it? So that's a four. Is that, oh, the yes, and this had to add up to seven, remember? So that's got to be three, that's got to be two. That's huge. That is absolutely huge, because that being two allows us to fill in those as twos. So these squares have become a three, four pair now. Is that done it or not? Might not have done. Yeah, where's eight in this row? It's got to go here. So that's seven. That's seven by Sudoku. We need a seven in this row. These two squares are six and six and eight again. Um, oh dear, dear, dear. I can't see how to do that. Uh, what what have we not used? <laughs> Which clues have we not used? I, I've, I've totally lost track. I don't know. Um, I suppose I could look up eights, couldn't I? I could orangeify the eights in case that helps me. Don't think it's going to. There's an orange in one of those. Is that useful? Don't think so. What are these squares? Three, five. Ah, we're seven in the top row. That seven is helpful. That's got to be a seven. Ah! So this is a three or a five. 
that 7 does the 7 and the 6, which does the 6 and the 8. Ah, good. Ah, and the 8 we know is the orange digit. So those two are now pure, pure orange. And in this column, that square, that 4 does some duty at last. That's a 3 then. So that's a 4, that's a 3. That, oh, <laughs> look what we're going to get here. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. Uh, two and six go into the grid. That's a six. Four and five go into the grid, which is done. Four, five, five, three, three, five, four. And if I've not made any rickets, I should have to put a seven here. And a five there. And two and six were my colours, so that loses its colour. And three and five are my colours, so that loses its colour. And that loses its flashing. That loses its flashing. I mean I could do all the twos and the sixes. Oh look, yeah, I've sort of I've sort of adulterated my twos a little bit. So twos, sixes. Threes and fives all turn green. Ones and nines are they? Or they might not all be highlighted. I think they. I think they are, but I'm not sure. And are all my eights highlighted? I think so. So that could be correct. Let's click tick. Yay! Thirty six. Thirty six people in fifty six days. So it is. It is an older puzzle. It's taken me over an. Yes, it has taken me over an hour. Well, that's not even remotely surprising. That is, it's incredible. That's an incredibly clever puzzle. The break-in is, it's magnificent, but it's very complicated. At least it was very complicated for me to understand it. But I, I think I eventually did. And it's all around this, the ability of things to span the central box if they have to be a single digit sandwich clue. And the way that this interacted with these three rows it's just i mean it's so ridiculous again i come back to it how do you think of this in a vacuum it, it led to a most fascinating solve it juice that really was amazing amazing um well if you're still with me thank you so much for watching uh let me know in the comments if you had a go at that and please give ick juice the most immense amount of credit for coming up with that brilliant puzzle um, and I especially enjoy the comments when they're kind. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.